It's TK Friday. Today we're working with screen and multiply blend modes. You're going to find out what that's all about here shortly. We're working with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly and welcome to TK Friday. Thank you so much for joining me today. And also my friend the lizard here, he says hi everyone. Today I want to introduce you to two very useful blend modes when editing images in Photoshop and especially when using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. But first I got something to tell you. Sean Bagshaw and Zach Schneff, and I'm probably saying that wrong, just came out with a new course called Producing Better Prints. So if you're one of those like me who like to make your own prints from home, this is a course that you don't want to miss out on. You definitely want to get this. It's over four and a half hours of instruction. And right now, it's at an introductory price and you can save 20% off. You'll use a uh, coupon code BP20 to get 20% off. But the good news is you can also use my promo code DK15 and then take an additional 15% off of that price, which is a really nice savings. And I think the course ends up costing you around 33 bucks when you use my promo code along with the BP20 20% promo code. So pick that up if you're so inclined and you want to start making better prints. And if you don't yet have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, it's only $29 and you can use my promo code DK15 on that. You'll save 15% off anything you purchase on Tony Kuiper's website. So it's good savings. I will link this information where you can pick up Sean's new printing course and the TK8 plugin for Photoshop and a bunch of training videos in the description below this video. And now let's jump into this. I have three, maybe four images to show you today. This is a little different. It's not a full edit, but I want to show you how these blend modes work when you're editing with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. They can be very helpful and very useful. I've provided download links in the description below this video. You can download these stock images and follow along with me. Now, as I said, I'm working with multiply in, in uh, screen blend modes today, but I'm going to start out working with color before I get into that. So on this lizard, my friend, the lizard here, I'm going to bring out some of his uh, color on his body, mainly the greens and the blues. And then I'll be using the multiply blend mode to bring down the value of this log or whatever branch that he's standing on old dead wood. But I'll be doing that secondly but first let's work with saturation the first thing i want to do is grab a hue saturation layer now you could grab a hue saturation right here in photoshop all your adjustment layers are in here but if you have the tk plugin for photoshop here's a little tip and trick you can either come up here to the cx or combo panel and grab different uh adjustment layers here or what i like to do a lot of your most common ones are right in here like this is hue saturation so if you click right here Voila, there's your hue saturation adjustment layer. That's a little tip for you. And by the way, I want to thank each and every one of you for sharing your comments. And when you also share my channel and my videos and you subscribe, that really helps me out. And I love hearing from you. So please comment as well today and uh, let me know what you're thinking out there. And if I can answer any of your questions, I will. And I know Tony Kuiper tunes into my YouTube channel and watches the videos as well as looks at the comments. And I'm sure he will chime in and answer comments from time to time too. All right, now let's adjust saturation on the lizard. You know, we could come up here to where it says master. You know, we have all the different colors that we can work on. But you know what? I'm going to try something a little different and I think a lot easier to do. And that is grab onto this saturation slider and really drag it aggressively to the right. Something like that. Now, I know that looks horrible, but this is another tip for you. And I've been starting to do this a lot. I put a black mask on here to hide what I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to put a black mask on here, and that adjustment is gone. But we want to bring it back, but I want to bring it back in a very smart way, and I want to use masking techniques to paint my adjustment on this lizard. But I can vary my opacity of my brush on different areas to bring more color out in one area, less in another. So it's pretty cool, but you'll see here in a sec. I'm working with color, right? So I think I'm gonna try a color mask. So I'm gonna click on this icon here. And I know I wanna adjust the green color, so I'm gonna click on the green and click OK. 
And I know I want to work on blue as well. Now I can take this slider right here and lighten up my selection here. And I'll, I can also try to see if I can get more green color in by dragging this over to the right. Just to, you know, it's bringing more green in or I can bring more yellow in if I want to go that way. But I think I want the green like that and that's good. But now check this out. I can use a mass calculator. I'm going to go and click on the mass calculator and I'm going to click plus and now I want to add another color. So I had green, right? So now I want to add blue to the mix. So let's find some blue right here and click OK. And now we can do the same thing and I can drag this to the right and really lighten that up. And I could pull this slider to the right and see if I can grab some more blue in there and, you know, maybe right around there and then click equals. Hey, it's like a math calculation, right? And there's my result. I have green and blue selected, but I can further refine this and lighten it up more. And remember, white reveals in a layer mask and black conceals. But we can go ahead and use a levels adjustment and, again, further refine this. So I can come to levels here and refine this a little bit. So what I want to do is lighten this area up here. So I'm going to take this mid-tone slider and drag it to the left a little bit like this. I can even take this highlight slider and drag it in more, make these areas lighter. And then I could take the shadow slider and drag it to the right and just protect other areas. But I'm going to be painting on this lizard, but I'll be using a nice soft edge brush at different opacities. Okay. And I think I'm satisfied with that. And now what I'll do is I'll put that to a black mask painting through a selection, and I'll be getting a white brush when I click this icon right here. I love doing it this way. So there's my black mask. You can see these uh, marching ants here or let me know, hey, Dave, you got a selection, man. You're ready to go. And now with a nice soft edge brush at 50% opacity, I'm going to start painting in saturation just like this. And I can be pretty loose here as I'm painting here. Now, I can reduce the opacity, like right here in this part. I think I'm going to change the opacity to 30%. Just type 3, and that'll that's a shortcut to go down to 30%. So I'll vary it. And I love this because I have control. And if I hit it again, I'll add another degree of that saturation on. Okay, so now down here on these legs, they're pretty strong. So I think I'm going to go down to 20%. I'm going to type 2 on my keyboard and just paint here. I don't have to worry about going on this log here because it's only picking up greens. Remember, that's the cool thing about working with a color range mask. Now, I can hit this a couple times if I'm going to bring that up, bring this up here. And now I'm going to go to like 50% and paint on this blue because it's not as strong. So I'm going to paint some here and I'm going to, every time I lift my brush again, I'm adding more increments of that blue. So one, two, three, four. I don't want to go too crazy. I'm going to paint over here. Don't have to worry about getting the eye because it will not get saturated. I'm going to throw a little there, throw a little there. Just coming through. And I think, by George, I think I got it. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Pretty cool, right? But what you're doing here is you're painting through a selection and you are painting your own mask. And if you want to see that mask, just click this double arrow. That's the mask that you created by painting it. That is really cool. Click that arrow again and we'll see the image again. Now we're going to work on the log. I should also point out if your saturation adjustment is too strong, you have two choices. You can either pull back on the saturation adjustment or you could pull back on the opacity. It's your choice either way, but I'm happy with it just the way it is. And now it's time to work on this log to darken it down. And that's where I'm going to use the multiply blend mode. And to do that, I'm going to grab any adjustment layer. I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer because I'm not going to really make adjustments on it. I'm just going to use it to put a multiply blend mode on the layer. That's all I'm using it for. Now, if I click on it right now, it'll apply. You see, I have a selection. It'll apply that selection to the mask. And I don't want that. So I need to deselect my selection so I can come here on the uh, CX panel and click right Right here and that'll deselect it and now I can click on this curves adjustment and it will put that curves adjustment layer there and then I could change the blend mode to multiply you notice how everything gets really dark but that's one of the great things about the multiply blend mode it's a really effective way of darkening things okay so what I need to do is hide this adjustment so how do you think I can do it if you're remembering my last tip alert I'm going to do it again click on this black mask in it hides it right there okay now what i need to do is start painting on this log but i'm going to do something before i do that i'm going to come up and 
There's a lot of mid-tones in here, so I'm going to come up to the luminosity mask and I'm going to grab a mid-tones 3 adjustment. And then I'll just output that to a black mask with a white brush painting through a selection. Again, I'm going to start at, I think, 50% with a nice soft edge brush and I'm going to stay away from this area in here, but I'm just going to start painting, you know, and darkening this down. It's really easy to do and I could paint over it several times and I'm going to come up in here and I'll go back in between the claws. Don't worry if you're wondering if I will, I definitely will, but it's very simple to just come in here and paint on your adjustments. And I love doing this. This is just, so easy to do and if you want to darken things more like this area right here i can hit this a couple extra times in there if i want to and i'll come down in here and hit that in there now i'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and i can come up in between like so and i got that nice soft feathered edge so if i get a little bit on the claw it's not going to hurt anything paint in here a little bit go in here come into this okay and then I'm just going to paint up through here because this is a shadow under here. So I can darken this a little bit more, you know, and I can even think of like, you know, as, as you dodge and burn, I can dart. See, I'm, I'm lifting my brush and hitting this a couple times and I'm just kind of just building this up and sculpting this a little bit. So I'm just thinking, I'm trying to think like an artist so I can take some creative license here. Okay. And I want to get this edge a little bit darker up in here. And that's all I want to do is darken it down. So let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, if you feel you went too strong, you can take this opacity and you can start to pull it back a little bit if you felt you went a little overboard. And I may do that. I'll keep that at 80%. But here's my before and here's my after. And then we could take a look at what our layer mask that we made looks like by clicking this double arrow here and that is what it looks like so i use that multiply blend mode on a curves adjustment layer painting through a mids three luminosity mask now let's go on to another image now we're on to this next image of a seascape with some sea stacks in it and what i want to do is bring a little balance back to this image i think it's out of balance i think the shadow area down here is a little too dark i'm going to lighten it while maintaining these shadows here and on the sky i just want to bring it down a little bit darken it so i'll use a multiply blend mode on the sky and a screen blend mode in the water Whenever I'm using these uh, blend modes, screen or multiply, I always like for me to use a curves. It's just something I do. You could use levels. It doesn't matter because we're not really going to use it. I can even shut down this property panel. Okay. All I'm using it for is to use its blend mode. So I'm going to change this blend mode from normal to screen because remember, I want to lighten up this water here and I'm going to do my little tip where I put a black mask on here to hide it. Now I'm gonna give you a formula and this is a tip alert. So we're gonna come up to the luminosity mass. Whenever you wanna lighten a dark area, this formula works pretty tried and true. And Tony Kuiper was the one that shared this with me. And so thanks for this, Tony, and I'm bringing it to all of you. So whenever you wanna lighten a dark area, here's a good formula for you. After you've opened up your luminosity masks, select a darks one, go to your mass calculator and subtract click on the minus and then click on darks three. This is the formula and then click equals. So a darks one minus a darks three, but you notice how the shadow areas stay dark here. Okay. And then just output this to a black mask, painting your selection through a white brush and you'll get this warning. No pixels are more than 50% selected. Don't worry about that. It's okay. Just click. Okay. You will be fine. Get yourself a nice big brush because I'm going to be painting in this area here. I'm going to use 50%. I think that's all I need. I could go back and paint over it again if I need to. So I'm going to type my five shortcut key for that. And watch, I'm going to paint over this water and a nice soft edge. I'm just going to work my way up to about this area right here. Now, I haven't lifted my brush. I'm just making sure I grabbed everything. Now, check this out. Here's the before. And you see how dark the water is. Now, I didn't lighten it up that much, but just enough to balance it out. Now, here's the after. But you notice how my darker shadows have maintained. They haven't gotten lighter, so it doesn't throw my contrast ratio off. I still have very good contrast. Again, the before 
and the after. And I could paint over it again if I wanted to, but I think it's good. If we want to see what our mask looks like, make sure you're on this layer and click the double arrow. And you can see there's my mask. And you see the dark areas are really protecting the shadows. So that's nice. So click this again, and there we go. Now let's darken up the sky. We lightened the dark water with the screen blend mode. Now we need to darken the sky. We're going to use multiply. It's just that simple screen multiply, lighten, darken. So what we're going to do is grab another curves adjustment layer. But remember, we have this selection. That's a no, no. We got to get rid of it. So click right here to deselect that selection. And now let's add another curves adjustment layer. I want to change this now from normal to multiply and everything gets dark. Now I want to hide that adjustment. So I'm going to put a black mask on it. And now we're going to come up to our luminosity masks. Click right here. And I'm just going to use a lights one luminosity mask. That's all I'm going to do. And now we're going to go ahead and now put that to a black mask. We'll be painting through a selection with a white brush. So we click this icon right here. Okay. And now with 50% opacity with a nice big brush, and right now that's at 100% opacity. Now I'm going to type the 5 key. And now I'm just going to paint right across this whole area right in here. Even over the C stack area. And I haven't lifted my brush yet. But we can see here is a before. And here's an after. Now let's take a look at our mask. So let's click on this double arrow here. And we can see the mask right here. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to take care of the C-Sacks because I don't want them getting any adjustment on them. I don't mind a little on the edges, but I'll show you how I'll take care of this. So follow me closely here. Again, I want to paint all the C-Stack in here dark except around the borders here. Okay, so here's how I do it. I'm going to go to the TK8CX panel and click this icon to select the sky. And it says this will discard your current selection. Do you want to continue? Okay, I do want to continue. Now my sky is selected. Now that's the opposite of what I want. So if I come right here in the CX panel and click this, this will invert it. And now I have the foreground selected. But here's something I've never done before and I'm going to show you here. And this just came to me as I was preparing for this tutorial. And I thought, wouldn't this be cool if I could do this? So what I'm doing is contracting this selection. Now watch what I do. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to contract it by 50 pixels and click OK. And you can see the marching ants have moved in, right? But now I want to add a nice feathered edge here. So you see this little feather icon right here? By the way, this will expand a selection and this contracts. But this feathers a selection. They're all right here and this inverts. So I'm going to click the feather and I'm going to feather it 15 pixels to have a nice soft little edge on here and click OK. And now I'm going to use... I'm going to fill this area with black paint so I don't get any adjustment on here. So I'm going to click this fill dialog right here. And you have a drop down here where it says contents. You know, you can use foreground, background, any color or black, 50% gray or white. I want black, so that's good. I'm going to click OK. And then if I go and look at my layer mask, let's take a look at the layer mask by clicking the double arrows here. Look how that's filled in. Now let me deselect my uh, selection so you can see. But see how I have that nice soft edge around here and, you know, I'm protecting the borders here, you know. I don't mind, like I said, a little bit of that darkening getting on the border. That'll make a nice transition. So I won't have to worry about any kind of halos and that's really why I did that. Now let's go back and see our results. So here it is. Here is the before and here is after but you see how nice the balance came and that was with a screen blend mode and a multiplied blend mode using luminosity masks hey give that a try and if you're already using screen and multiply blend modes let us know in the description below i'm sure we'd all like to hear the different ways that you guys and gals out there are using the tk8 plugin for photoshop and how you're working with different blending modes now we're on to a pair image. There's going to be quite a transformation here. So watch this whole thing. You're going to learn some new tips here as well. Now, by the way, I did crop this image into more of a square type crop because I didn't like all the extra space it had above it. So when you, if you download this image, you'll see it's a lot, has a lot more height to it. And so I just cropped it in and you could crop it if you'd like. The first thing I want to do is this pair that is cut in half is really light. So I'm going to use a multiply blend mode to take care of it. So again, I'm going to go and grab a curves adjustment layer, put it in the multiply blend mode. 
Now, I still think it's too light, so I'm going to double this up, okay? Nobody says you can't double up these, these layers, okay? So I'm going to come right here, and this will make a copy of that layer, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now you can see it looks pretty normal now. Now, I'm referring to this cut section of the pair. The rest of the image looks horrible, but I'll take care of that. I'm going to put these two layers into a group because they're kind of working together. So if I hold my shift key down, this layer is selected, curves on copy, hold the shift key and click right here. They both become selected. Now I can put those in a group with a black mask if I click on the left side of this group right here and that hides my adjustment. So now I need to pick some kind of a luminosity mask to work with. And I do want to point out the reason for the black mask is so when I make a luminosity mask, I want to base it off of the image the way it looks right now, not the way it looks after it has already been adjusted with those two multiply blend modes stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to come up to luminosity mask and I want to find a luminosity mask that will separate this light area pretty well. So that's a lights one. Let's try lights two. I'm going in the right direction. There's a three. Here's a four. And I think that separates it out pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead with a levels adjustment and refine that a little bit. So what I want to do is lighten that up a little more. I'm going to take this midtone slider and move it to the left to lighten that area up a little bit. And then I'm going to take the shadow slider and drag it in to really select that area. You see that? Because I'm going to paint this adjustment on. Now I can lighten this up even more if I drag this more to the left like that, and I think I'm pretty good. I can even take this highlight slider, move it in a little more. I wanna maintain texture in here, by the way, but I think I'm good right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and output this like I've been doing for the other two images. I'll put it to a black mask with a white brush and I'll be painting through a selection. Now I could have used the object selection tool, the quick selection tool, um, whatever to select that pair, but I'm using this method because I'm, I like the fact that I can paint my adjustment in and keep a nice soft edge around here. And now with my white brush with a nice soft edge, I'm going to paint at 100% opacity. I'm going to type my zero key to get 100% and I can just paint this adjustment right on here very liberally, just like that. And the mask gives me a nice edge around here. So that's nice. And we can see here's my before and here's my after. Now I think that's too strong. So I'm going to take this opacity and pull it back just so it looks nice and natural. I want it to be light, but I want to see all these textures and things in here. So here is the before. See how it like screams out at you. It looks very unnatural. And here is the after. I really like this image. I like the composition, but we're not done yet. Stick with me. The next thing I want to do is darken up this background, this fabric around the pairs. And to do that, what I'll do is select the subject. So we're going to come right here and we're going to click on this icon that looks like a person to select subject, but I can't use a uh, group layer to do it. So I'm going to click on the background layer. Now I'm going to click select subject and this will discard your current selection, which is fine. I'm going to click OK. And you can see my pairs are selected. Now it's the opposite of what I want. So if I come to this invert icon right here around, these are all for selections, right? So click right here and now it selects my background. And as you can clearly see, I have the marching hand showing me I have a selection. I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm not going to use multiply or screen. I'm going to use a color grading tool. You know, I love it. I had to get back to it. So let me click on a color grading tool. When I do and click the plus, you'll notice that there is my selection right there, or there's my mask that it's built for me. And if I click this double arrow icon, you can see there's my mask right there. Okay. So let me click it again and we'll get back. Now I'm going to go ahead and darken this image up. What I want to do is take the shadow block and click on it and pull my shadows back and darken that background a good bit somewhere right around in here. And then I'm going to go and turn down these highlights in here. So I'm going to click on my highlight block and start to drag it back just to make these highlights a little more softer, you know, not quite as intense, maybe somewhere right around in there. Now, if I zoom into the image, you can see, and this is what I was talking about. You see the, whoops, you see the black line going around here, but I'm going to show you a little tip and trick here. So this is a tip alert. And this is one of the drawbacks of using selections as opposed to luminosity masks to make adjustments. Sometimes you can get some of these 
artifacting edges or halos and things like that, but we can take care of that. And let me show you what we can do here. Now I'm using a curves adjustment layer. It's a color grading tool, but it is a curves adjustment layer. So if I come up to the properties panel and click on this little mask icon, you'll notice in here, I have the slider called feather and density. I want to work with the feathering of this edge here. So this is a really helpful tool. If I take this feather and start to drag it to the right, see how it gets really soft there. If I go too far, it'll start to get like a halo around it. You see that halo? But let's find that sweet spot. I'm going to start dragging it to the left. And I think right here at 3.2 is perfect. My haloing dark lines are all gone now let me go ahead and click this icon and go back to a full screen but here's my before adjustment and here's my after but see how things are looking much better i'm not done yet i have a couple more things to show you and something new coming up the next thing i want to do is a nice little freehand sculpting on the pair here just to add depth and dimension a little bit on the cut open pair as well so i'm just going to grab a burn tool Click the left side, it gives me a 50% gray layer and a soft light blend mode. And I want to have an opacity of about 10%. And I'm going to start on the, and I have a nice soft brush here. I'm going to start on this pair and just kind of darken up some of these texture areas in here, like so. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and paint on these shadow sides. You know, any area where I see a shadow, I'm going to give it a little bit of a sculpting, you know, here and here like down along this edge. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger and, you know, just like a, a painter of still lifes, I'm going to add some depth and dimension. So 10%. So every time I lift my brush, I'll add a little more. I'm going to come to this side over here and sculpt that and down in here and make my brush a little smaller. I'm going to go and type 05. That'll give me 5% and maybe just give this a little bit of sculpting in here and here down in here and just you know finesse it a little bit give it a little more here and let's take a look here is the before the freehand burn and here is the after so it gives it a nice little sculpting effect and i might just throw a little bit right near just to smooth this area out and in here i don't know i think that looks good again here is the before and here's the after and next is a double vignette don't miss out on this I'm calling it a double vignette, but really what I want to do is draw emphasis to these pairs, okay? And I don't want to lighten them, okay? So I'm going to grab a lasso tool. I'm going to type L to get my lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw a loose, organic, I like to call it organic type shape around here, okay? Just like that. And then I'm going to come to the TK actions and grab a freehand vignette and take it just the way it is. Gaussian blur comes up, 379 pixels. Click OK, and let's take a look. Here is my before, and here's my after. But see how they just spotlights these pairs? You know, it darkens all the area around here, meaning that the pairs will look like they're spotlighted without spotlighting them, okay? And now I'm going to take my opacity and actually darken it some more. It's a 50%. I'm going to take it up to, I think, right around 71%. So here is a before, and here's the after. Isn't that pretty cool? And if it's too much, you could take it down, but I like that. I'm going to leave it there. Again, I'll look one more time before and after. I like it. Now I'm thinking I want to add another vignette. This is why I call it a double vignette. And what I'm going to do is come to the TK actions and let's grab a regular vignette. And let's click OK. And that just puts a vignette around the edges. We can see here is a before and here is an after. And I may darken that up a little bit more. It's a 50%. I'm going to go up to 57%. And normally I use Blend Diff to protect the dark tones, but I don't have many real dark tones here, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to make the canvas a little bit smaller here, so just so you can see. Here is the before the double vignette, and here is the after the double vignette. Now here's our overall before, and here's our after. I mean, quite a dramatic change, wouldn't you say? But there were three images today. I was really showing you the screen blend mode and how effective it can be for lightening darker areas of your image and also how the multiply blend mode can be used to darken 
your image. And it works in a very beautiful way. And when you combine it with luminosity masks or a zone or color mask for that matter, you have a real winner. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. And don't forget, click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I put up a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.